you'll never do anything. You got to act. Faith, the scripture says this, that faith without works, Hebrews 11 and 1 emphasizes that faith without works is dead. It simply says it's without works, without action. Faith without action is dead. Let me say it to you again. Faith without action is dead. If you want a new house, if you want to lose weight, if you want to need more in God, if you want to read the word, if you want to study, you want to be a preacher, you want to be a leader, you want to be a school, it takes action. I've been seeing so many people graduate, but it took action for them to get to work. If they be lazy and don't do nothing, they will not graduate. I remember this man years ago, he, he was in school with me, but he graduated. He was almost 20 something years old. He was still in high school. He was doing about 23, 24, but he graduated. It took a little more action, but he graduated. I'm saying to you that faith without works is dead. So here are three important actions towards achieving your goals. Number one, it says this, and we just said it, faith without works, write this down, is a lifeless faith. James 2 and 17 says, so faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And here's the second thing that you must know. It says this, that number two, diligent planning leads to abundant success that simply means you got a plan to take some change you got a plan to do things different you got a plan to make moves don't allow yourself to think that there's no planning involved because planning has to has to happen there's some type of plan it's like i wanted to move into a better home but i'm like i ain't making enough money so either i make more money or i go to a lesser home it has to be a plan so the plan is to get more money because I don't want to go to something less. I want to go to something greater. So I got to save. I got to put back. I got to do what I have to do to make the plan work. Be willing to plan and be willing to work and be effective, diligent planning. A person sitting at a desk surrounded by various planitudes is like a calendar or to-do list. They know it's there, but they utilize it to work. A garden filled with blue, beautiful flowers with the, with, with, with the gardener is simply preparing the soil, watering and nurturing, the plants diligently, diligently resulting in abundant harvest. That means it took some time for the beautiful flowers to grow. It just does not happen by osmosis. It, ha it takes time to build, so you must plan. And here's the third thing, you gotta watch this, and this is what I had to learn. Three, forgetting the past and reaching for victory oh that's good you got to forget the past the things that i've been through the sins i had to forget i remember i was about 19 20 this is right before i expressed it to anyone what was going on and my father asked this person to take me to work and me because i still had that fear inside of me i had a pencil in my hand in my hand and i wanted to kill this person i took some self-defense and a little bit of classes and I understood about what I could do with that with that pencil inside my finger how powerful it would become and I wanted to jug him in his neck and destroy his life in the car while he was taking me to work but I never expressed to anybody what I was going through it took that bout with with my girlfriend then to bring that thing out of me what I'm saying to you is that us if we don't deal with these things if you don't deal with your past, you could never reach for victory. You made a mistake, so forget your past. You failed the test, forget your past. You can take it again. He left you, forget your past, you can live again. This simple, the business did not work, forget your past. I'm telling you that when you forget your past and keep moving, and keep moving, yes, there's a refresher. Yes, you see things that remind you. Yes, things may go through your mind. But what I'm telling you is you gotta forget it and only the Holy Spirit can help you forget it. And when you remember it, it will be to heal someone. Philippians 3, 13 through 14 said this, brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what's behind Pressing toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize. So there's three types of motives that we must take. There are wrong motives, there are right motives, and there are intentional motives. We are going to be intentional. The first step we're going to do, we're going to acknowledge and face traumatic, event, traumatic events head on. 
Start by listing your negative traumas you have experienced and try to get to the root cause of the pain or anxiety. If you can't do it, get someone who can help you. Like, 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 like Pop Robeson did for me and Mother Robeson did for me. They helped me to understand who I was at as a man. They helped me to deal with these things. It wasn't my brother. It wasn't my sister. It wasn't my father. It wasn't enemy. It took someone outside of without my normality to help me deal. And there were others in my life. There were others that spoke to me. There were others that helped me to understand who I was as, as a man. My wife, Trenisha, those different ones. People spoke to me for a moment. There were different people in my life who have spoke to me to help me to understand that things that are of the past are just the past. And if God wants you to move on, to move on. Here's the next thing. You got to identify the emotional triggers that have resulted from your past, such as fear, anger, or negative emotional behavior. I'm telling you today, that in order for you, you got to identify the things that trigger you. If something causing you that triggers and that, that's something that you need to pray and work on. If things are not changing with that thing that trigger, you need to work on and be healed from that. And here's the final thing. The final step is work through the issues identified that we just spoke about in order to gain a clear understanding of yourself and your identity and your purpose i say that each and every one of you today that god wants to hear you and you are healed you can live in the purposes of god you can live in a new life but you got to know that in order for you to move forward you got to deal with the root that has been lost into your spirit